On the next Canine Corner, we'll stop by a CrossFit class in Torrance that encourages a canine-friendly environment, and we'll be talking all about disaster preparedness for pets. Plus, we'll meet a few of our favorite rescue dogs who are still looking for their forever homes. All this coming up on the next Canine Corner. Hi there, I'm Rhiannon Tertanich, your host for Canine Corner, the show that your dog will give two paws up. It's the new year and what better time to get fit and get organized with your canine companion. We'll stop by a CrossFit class in Torrance that promotes a dog-friendly environment, and we'll be talking all about disaster preparedness for your pup, especially for the upcoming El Nino. But first, we want to reintroduce you to a few of our favorite rescue dogs from 2015 who are still looking for their forever homes. Hi, my name is Danielle, and these are 10 things that you should know about Lucy. Lucy is two years old. She was named after Lucille Ball because she's so spunky. She's a miniature pincher and a beagle mix. She loves to play with other dogs and she loves being the center of attention at the dog park. She loves snuggling and when you go to bed at night, she's probably gonna start snuggling at your head and she'll probably end up at your feet by the morning. Lucy is good with dogs, cats, and kids. She loves to go on car rides and her boyfriend is Zinazu, a little Pomeranian. Lucy is happy, friendly, and sweet. And if she were a celebrity, she'd be Sandra Bullock because she's the sweet and fun girl next door. Hi, I'm here with Lulu, and here are 10 things you need to know about Lulu. She's a purebred deerhead chihuahua. Uh, she's 15 months old. She's full grown and weighs about eight pounds. Lulu was unfortunately found, by, found in a dumpster by a teenager, but now after being rescued, she's so super happy and so much fun. She's a triple threat because she loves kids, cats, and other dogs. She loves to go for walks and show off how she prances. And Lulu isn't sad about her scars. She thinks that they give her character, don't they? They do. She loves to snuggle in bed and make herself at home on your pillow. And if she was a celebrity, she'd totally be Kate Hudson because she's just a little ray of sunshine and positivity. Hi, my name is Lauren and this is Lacey. And here are 10 things you need to know about Lacey. Lacey is a designer dog referred to as a Beagle, which is a Beagle Bulldog mix. Lacey's two and a half years old. She's very athletic and enjoys to exercise. She's a big crush on one of our dogs named Clive. Lacey loves to eat and throw her snacks in the air. Lacey needs a good guardian who's gonna be the boss. Lacey snores like a truck driver. Lacey loves to go to the beach. Lacey's the perfect size at 36 pounds. And if Lacey were a celebrity, she'd be Ronda Rousey because she's strong, beautiful, affectionate, and fierce. Hi, I'm Brendan. Here I'm going to give you 10 facts. 10 facts about Clive right here. These are all absolutely true. You can verify them in his autobiography by JRT Publication, coming scheduled for 2016 with the movie coming out in 2017. All right, so let's start off about Clive. He is a West Highland Terrier mixed with a Jack Russell Terrier, so he's super smart and he's super mischievous. He can't, you can't see that right now because he's being a little calm, but this guy has some energy. He's a very loving dog. He's 18 months old, which is a great age to be a dog. You know, he's figuring himself out. It's like the 20s for people. So, and the other part is that he loves the hose. He is a dog who loves water. So, you know, you can put the hose on and he'll dance with it. It's a really fun thing to watch. He also loves other dogs. We followed this guy for four months around winter to get a hold of him and to pull him off the street, which he was worth every day. And we got him right on Christmas Eve, which is great because there was a cold snap after that and Clive would have been a cold puppy. So let's see, he has a big crush on Lacey. This dog has a big heart. He's very loving and really adapts well to different situations. Those are love bites. And he also zooms around every night at eight. So he's, he's a dog that has good energy. He's gonna bring love and excitement into your life. If he were a celebrity, he would be Prince Harry because he is sophisticated, he has nice eyes, and he is a very classy dog. Tweed is about two years old. He was a stray. He may be house trained. <coughs> he's not fos fostered, so he sleeps, he lives in a kennel, but his kennel is clean in the morning, so that's why there's a possibility that he's housebroken. So when we let him out in the morning, he goes and does his business, and um, he's a great little dog. He's happy. He, um, what he really loves is a, our rescue on Harbor, uh, across from where the cruise ships come in. 
They have a, I don't know, a dancing water to spout, out, to spout out of the ground. Tweed loves those. He tries to eat them, he jumps high in the air. He just thinks that's a ball. He'd probably be a good water to go to the beach with or great little dog. We had T Tweed's DNA done and his one of his parents was a purebred poodle, so that's where he gets the hair. And the other was a mixed breed, so we don't know what else. It was just kind of a mixture. He likes every dog at the rescue. Sometimes when he meets a new dog on a walk, he barks. I don't know if that means he wants to meet him or he doesn't like him, but in his home, he would be like his family of dogs because every dog he likes at our rescue. If you're interested in adopting any of these dogs, please contact us at 310-618-5762 or email us at caninecorner at torrentca.gov and we can put you in contact with the rescue group. Those dogs are so cute, how could you not want to bring one home? Sometimes after a long day, it's tough to head to the gym and leave your canine companion at home. CrossFit South Bay promotes a dog-friendly workout environment. CrossFit South Bay is much more than a gym. CrossFit South Bay started off as a small community gym. We started off in a garage and we've always kept it that way. So um, from there we've expanded our offering from like CrossFit to yoga, Pilates, cycling, um, kids classes even. And as CrossFit South Bay has grown, it has always maintained its close-knit feel and a dog-friendly environment. We started off with like a very small group of people working out and we kind of, we've always kept it that way. There's always been dogs around. So as we grew, we just kind of kept them around. And they're always fun little guys to have around uh, when you're sweating and you can barely breathe. It's always fun to see them on the side smiling. And the dogs aren't the only ones smiling. Dog owners love getting a chance to bring their dog with them to work out. It's hard to take him to restaurants and whatnot that are pet friendly just because he's so big. Not a lot of places have the room for him, even though they're pet friendly. So it's actually really nice that we can bring him here and there's a lot of room. He can run around and have a good time and he loves it. Dog owners love having a chance to bring their dog along for their workout and part of their daily routine. Really, we have working out, we have work, we have all these other things. They only have us, and so if we can involve them in those things, that's cool, you know? Yeah. More time with them. And the dog-friendly workout environment gives the dogs a chance for social interaction and a little exercise. I'm at work all day. I have somebody that plays with them during the day and lets them out and stuff, but it's nice to get him out of the house even to just kind of chill out. And then everybody's super dog-friendly, and they'll, they'll just walk by and like pet him and give him attention and stuff, so of course he loves that and the dog owners make sure to keep the dogs safe during the workouts. This is like the best gym ever, so um, it's a great family community for people and for pets. So uh, it's fun, I mean, if you like animals especially, because there's usually always one running around. And CrossFit South Bay owner Forrest Jung believes having dogs around can make a workout even better. Dogs <laughs> always enhance the experience. I mean, they're fun little guys no matter what. I mean, it's just fun to have them around. And like, even if, when they're barking and being a little crazy, it's just something to laugh at. You feel like you are just a friend, not necessarily, um, you know, a customer or a member. I mean, you just come, everybody knows everybody. So that makes it nice and friendly and relaxing. Um, but then the fact that you can bring your, you know, fur baby is, is awesome. So yeah, I think it adds to the relaxation and the, you know, just the camaraderie of everything. If you're interested in contacting CrossFit South Bay, please visit CrossFitSouthBay.com or call 424-901-0037. Getting a good workout in and getting to hang out with your dog? Sign me up. We're going to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. There's much more fun when we come back. Welcome back to Canine Corner. I'm your host, Rhiannon Tritanich. The new year is a great time to get organized and prepared in case of a disaster. And the upcoming El Nino is even more of a reason to make sure you and your canine companion would be safe if something happened. Denise Fleck from Sunny Dog Inc. is here to talk to us about pet preparedness and safety. So did you realize that only about 10 to 15 percent of people are actually prepared to react appropriately during an emergency? Wow, I have no idea. That means 75 percent of people don't and the other 10, or 10 to 15 percent don't have a clue. So it's really important, especially when we have furry, fin, scaled, feathered friends in our house who can't react themselves or react definitely inappropriately, that we're prepared and we know what to do. So readiness, positive mental attitude, and curiosity, I think are the three tools that'll get you through. 
Now talking about that readiness, of course, being a pet first aid and CPR instructor, I'm going to say you need to be up to date on your pet first aid and CPR skills because during a disaster, paws can get cut or burned, animals can get upset stomachs from drinking bad water, especially here in Southern California, if there's an abundance of rain and water on the ground, that can result in giardia, which basically is um, massive quantities of vomiting and diarrhea that can then shared be, with, be shared with us humans as well. Denise encourages pet owners to keep a list of designated pet caregivers in their wallet in case of an emergency. Something you want to put outside on a window near your front door. So it should be something somewhat weather or uh, weatherproof, not just waterproof, weatherproof so that the sun isn't beating down on it. But what this says is please rescue our animal family members. Um, and it lists dogs, cats, birds, others, and you write two, three, you know, if you have a bird, a gecko, or whatever else is on there, and then emergency contact information. That should be um, phone numbers to reach you, but also maybe somebody else on the street that a first responder could get a hold of that could help evacuate your pet. But um, if you evacuate, your pet has to evacuate with you. Peel off this sticker or cross it off if you're taking your pets with you because you don't want first responders needlessly searching your house for animals that aren't there that you now have it safe. And a big part of being prepared is having a pet preparedness kit in case of a disaster. Let's start with the crate or the carrier. <laughs> and obviously these can be much smaller depending on the size of your dog or cat, but it should always be big enough for him to stand up, turn around in, and lie down. So let's talk a little bit more about what should go in the crate along with Fluffy or Fido. Um, he should have a blanket that can keep his, him company, maybe his favorite blanket. Especially if you're evacuating him to a shelter and won't be with him, something I suggest is maybe your favorite t-shirt or nightgown. And actually, it shouldn't smell so soapy clean. Put it on for a little while before you throw it in with him so that it'll have your scent. And that'll make him feel a little bit more comfortable while the two of you are separated because he can at least, you know, have his, your scent with him. Now, as far as the disaster kit for our Fido or our Fluffy even, water. For small dogs, you need to plan on a half a gallon per day of okay. water. For large dogs, a gallon per day. And for us humans, about a gallon per day. You need to have water ready to go because it isn't necessarily going to be available to us. What goes along with water for our dogs? The food, of course. And I will tell you, a lot of people these days are feeding um, raw diets to their pets and many of their pets are thriving. It may not be for everyone, but many pets do thrive on that. But if we're without refrigeration, that's not going to be a good diet for our pets. So although I actually do give my dogs raw diets for dinner, Every morning, they get kibble, yogurt, and blueberries, just so that they're used to processing the kibble. I just always feel that in the event of an emergency, that's what they're gonna have to go for. So you're gonna wanna have your dry food. If you have canned food, you're gonna need a non-electric can opener, or make sure you have the kind that just pops open, those pop tops. So pay attention when you're putting it in your kit. Also, when you're putting these things in your kit, I want you to pay attention to the expiration date. What I generally say is pick a date, whether it's the end of the year, the first of the year, the time we change the clocks forward or backward, but that's always a good time, they say, to check smoke alarms in our house. Go through your pet disaster kit too to make sure nothing has leaked or gotten spoiled in any fashion and change things out. And Denise says keeping a list with your kit can help make sure you have everything you would need. And it just tells you all of the things you need to have so you can check it off and then to put down some important information here. I know a lot of people will already have some of these things like their veterinarian, their animal ER, the police, the fire department in their um, phones. And you see we've got all the things checked off here that are on the list. Um, the harness for your pet and that's how you can safely attach him to the car seat if need be, a leash. You need a muzzle. I know a lot of people don't want to ever put a muzzle on their dogs, but it doesn't prevent their breathing if done properly. Of course, we need a flashlight for us, but that you know helps with our pets. And maybe some sort of calming agent. There's all kinds of amazing aromatherapies on the market. Find out if they work for your pet. So Denise, tell me about your pocket guides and about the new one you have coming out this spring. I'd be delighted. Um, I have written dog first aid and CPR and cat first aid and CPR and pocket guides. And what's really cool about these is they have little tabs so you don't have to read everything at once. You just figure out what it is, poisoning or you know, bandaging paws or pet first or 
uh, CPR and rescue breathing and you flip right to that tab and these are great things you should read ahead of time so that you know what to do so you can actually go on autopilot when something happens but they're also you know excellent to keep in your kit to refer to at the last moment and just recently the dog first aid and CPR came out as an ebook so you can you know have that app ready to go with you at all times additionally i've written a book called pet first aid for kids because our younger family members two-legged that is love our animals as well the other thing i would just love to mention is that come next spring um, i will have another pocket guide out on what we talked about today pet disaster preparedness so in the meantime they can watch this video over and over maybe refer to my website but you will have a pocket guide available so that you will have these tips at your fingertips well thank you so much I'm delighted to be here and helping people to help their pets if you're interested in contacting Denise please visit sunnydoginc.com those are such great tips everyone to start the new year off right and put together a preparedness kit for their pet Denise is back with us now to talk about pet safety during a disaster. Yeah, that's like one of the saddest things and there's no guarantees that they're going to ho come home at mealtime. Some people think, well, when they get hungry, they'll come home, but there are no guarantees. And sometimes with disasters, especially like with us, where there may be a lot of rain, some of the scents have changed and maybe even the landmarks that they use to navigate their way. So they may not be able to find their way back to you. So it's really important along in your checklist in this waterproof container that along with your pet's medical records you have pictures of your pet and pictures of your pet with you. That gives you a good clear photo that you've picked out ahead of time that if you need to make flyers you have a way to start doing that and posting that on the various lost pet websites and taking it to the animal shelters and finding out if your pet's missing. It's also important that you have a picture of your pet with all of your family members because you never know who it is that is going to have to retrieve that pet from the shelter and you want to have identity proof that you guys belong together. That's why you want to have designated caregivers for your pets. It's so important. Again, we think, oh, I'll worry about that later. Or it's not going to happen. But some family members or friends or somebody down the street, maybe it's the retired person or somebody who works at home, um, bring them, you know, baked goods for the holidays. Get to know them and let them get to know your pet. Because if you're not allowed back up their, your street, if they know your pet, you've been, you know, you've exchanged keys, maybe that you would do the same and reciprocate for them. They can at least go in and get the the animal on leash or check and just see if he's okay they don't even maybe have to move the animal but they can give you some peace of mind so it's important to designate those caregivers have their numbers on your pet alert sticker and also on that little ID emergency card you're going to keep by your driver's license in your wallet in case something happens and you can't get to your pets in time well, the first thing that comes to mind with our four-legged friends is they're not used to it in Southern California and sometimes something accompanies rain. It's that great big noise and that flash of lightning, which can scare many pets. So especially if they're home alone, um, you want to make sure they're secure, that you don't leave a lot of things plugged in because if they're kind of animal that might pace and knock over lamps or unplug TVs or chew on cords, you're asking for a disaster right there. But you might check into some sort of calming agent for them for when those big storms hit. And there are some aromatherapies you don't need any prescription for, but you want to try them out ahead of time. They work different ways, but they're safe for most dogs. And you just rub a little on your fingers and rub it in the ear flap, or you can spray it on their bandanas or their collars. And it just takes the, the edge off. It makes them chill and keeps them calmer. Of course, those with severe problems, you may need to check with your veterinarian about some medications, um, things that we often use for bee stings and rashes, antihistamines, sometimes can make a pet very sleepy and with um, you know a veterinary okay, maybe that's something you would do is give a low dose of something like that, again, just to keep them calm and relaxed. But yes, with El Nino, there'll be a lot of water on the ground. There could be fallen trees. Um, water that sits breeds bacteria. We probably won't have to worry about mosquitoes because it'll still be cool, but it breeds bacteria and you never want your pets to drink any of that water that's been sitting out because they could get giardia or just any type of upset stomach in which they'll have a lot of vomiting and diarrhea which could lead to dehydration and a lot of us don't take dehydration seriously enough for our pets or for us it really can be fatal 
Our bodies and our pets' bodies, like the planet Earth, are about three quarters water. So we need that good fresh water supply at all times. So we really don't want them suffering through that and getting any kind of intestinal bugs. So make sure you have a good fresh water supply. Um, go look at your yard every time after there's been a big storm. Don't just let the dog out because a tree branch could have fallen on the fence or a lot of the water and mud rushing through could have unearthed the fence and now your pet no longer has a safe containment and can escape. So there are a lot of things to be thinking about with the heavy rains. If you have a question, contact us and we'll be sure to get you the right answer. Call us at 310-618-5762 or email us at caninecorner at torrentca.gov. Now if you missed the adoption segment at the beginning of our show or just want to see the adorable dogs again, here's your recap. Lucy is a two-year-old pincher beagle mix. She loves snuggling and is good with other dogs, cats, and children. She's a happy, healthy, and loving dog. Lulu is a purebred deerhead chihuahua and she's 15 months old. Lulu loves dogs, kids, and cats. She loves to go for walks. She's a very sweet dog and is looking for her forever home. Lacey is a Beagle Bulldog mix and is two and a half years old. She's very athletic and loves to exercise. Lacey loves to go to the beach and loves snacking. Clive is a West Highland Terrier Jack Russell Terrier mix who's a year and a half old. He loves other dogs and has great energy. Tweed is two years old. He was a stray. Animals Rule had him DNA tested and found out one of his parents was a purebred poodle and the other was a mixed breed. He's a very happy dog with a great personality. He likes other dogs once he gets to know them. He's a very sweet dog. If you're interested in adopting any of these dogs, please contact us at 310-618-5762 or email us at caninecorner at torrentca.gov and we can put you in contact with the rescue group. If you want even more Canine Corner, be sure to like our Facebook page and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. That's all the time we have today. Thanks for joining us here on Canine Corner. I'm Rhiannon Chertanich and we'll see you next time.